congratulations to our University of Birmingham graduates. Here we are in the Great Hall at the heart of the Edgbaston campus. Attendees, mostly graduates and their friends and family, are seated. Here are the student musicians.
now we're getting started. Here's the first of our two mace bearers beginning the ceremony. The centenary mace bearer is usually a staff member who has volunteered to take part in the ceremony. The mace bearer enters through the back of the great hall and leads a procession of staff to the stage. Squire Bedell, who is the second of the two mace bearers, follows. are placed on stage for the duration of the ceremony. I declare the congregation open. Well, good afternoon and welcome to Birmingham in the rain. It is great to see so many of you here. My name is Hugh Adlington and as Pro Vice Chancellor for Research, it's my pleasure to welcome you, our graduands and your friends, family and supporters to your graduation ceremony. We are all here today to celebrate you, your hard work, dedication, and resilience. Today marks the culmination of this part of your educational journey. You chose the University of Birmingham because you wanted to be part of a vibrant community in a fantastic city which champions excellence, fosters innovation, and encourages a thirst for knowledge. During your time at Birmingham, we have emerged from a global pandemic which has impacted our lives in ways that we could never have imagined. We have witnessed the terrible invasion of Ukraine and the ongoing war. And we have and continue to experience significant cost of living challenges at home. In times like these, the power of relationships is crucial. As a university, we see this power in our relationship with Franco University Lviv, which is helping to support the conservation of Ukrainian higher education. We see it as we host academics fleeing war and conflict from many parts 
of the world. And we see it as we work with our guild to support students in managing the cost of living crisis. Your journeys to reach this point will almost certainly not have been what you were expecting. They will have been journeys marked by challenges and growth, moments of doubt and moments of inspiration. But you are here today having overcome all obstacles and having achieved your goals nonetheless. Just for a second, stop and consider what you have achieved. Your stories may all be different, but they will have common threads. You have explored new ideas and experienced the thrill of intellectual discovery. You have tackled seemingly insurmountable problems and overcome them. You have met new people who have inspired you in many ways and made friendships that will last a lifetime. You have expanded your horizons, challenged assumptions, and developed the critical thinking skills necessary to thrive in the world that awaits you. So I hope that as you look back on all of this, you will feel a huge sense of pride. Today is an important step in your journey, a moment to celebrate the tenacity, determination, and drive you have shown to reach your goals, you now have the opportunity to apply your expertise, to make an even bigger difference. Those of us sitting on this stage are looking to you to address the needs of our world now and in the future. And as I say that, that's quite a lot of pressure, I realize. So please live up to it. Indeed, the need for individuals like you has never been greater. In today's rapidly changing world, with society facing complex and interconnected challenges, you are the leaders and the innovators who will shape our future. It is our hope that your time here at the University of Birmingham has equipped you with the tools you need to embrace the role with compassion, understanding, and confidence. Your actions have the power to make a difference, and you can choose to make that difference a positive one. Now, as you embark on the next step on your path, let us take a moment to recognize those who have been instrumental in your success so far. Sitting behind me are just some of our university community who have encouraged your intellectual curiosity, nurtured your creativity, and inspired you to question and explore. You have also been supported in myriad ways by the tutors and student support teams around you. So, graduands, I would like to offer you the opportunity now to thank everyone who has supported you during your time here. Let's give them all a big round of applause. And sitting in front of me here in this great hall and watching live online around the world with cameras at the ready are your friends, family and supporters who are so proud of everything you have achieved. You will all have that person or those people who believed in you, people who supported you and showed you kindness and without whom you wouldn't be here. So, graduands, let's give a big round of applause to say thank you to all your supporters and the people who made it possible. So 
Very soon, you'll come up onto this stage and I will admit you to your degree. This is your moment. When your name is read out, that will be your graduation. And family and friends, that is your cue to make a lot of noise. So, one last word of advice. Be very careful on the steps. Give a big smile for the camera. And don't forget to savour your moment. Thank you. Now for the handing of the scrolls. The graduands will walk from the left of the stage to the centre and collect their scroll from the conferring officer. After they're congratulated, they'll walk off stage. Good afternoon. My name is Diana Spencer and I'm the Dean of Liberal Arts and Natural Sciences here at the University of Birmingham. And it's my great delight and, and my real privilege to be presenting this afternoon at this ceremony, the graduands. Interim Pro Vice Chancellor, to you and the university, I present the name of these graduands as listed in my program, proved worthy to be admitted to their respective degrees. By virtue uh, of my authority as Pro Vice Chancellor, I admit those persons listed in the program, both in attendance and in absentia, to the degrees for which they are to be presented. College of Arts and Law, School of History and Cultures, Doctor of Philosophy. For research into the extent and impact of Hellenistic influence in Northeast Saudi Arabia, Musa Nalyami. For research into graffiti and the culture of graffiti, make it, graffiti making in late antique Mediterranean, Rachel Baines. <laughs> For research into autocratic discourse in the literature of Tiberian Rome, Elizabeth Crump. For research into the early Byzantine ceramics and economy of Dion in Macedonia, Kyriakos Fragulis. <laughs> Master of Research, Nina Bedo. <laughs> Jade Anastasia Myers. Harry Benjamin Nunn. <laughs> Master of Arts, Antiquity, Classics and Ancient History, Rory Baird. <laughs> Howard George Butcher. <laughs> Rhiannon Christine Rebecca Watts Robinson. Social Research, African Studies, Dominic Praditinyam, <laughs> Bachelor of Arts, Ancient History, Johnny Barker, <laughs> Jasmine Clark, <laughs> Jack Forbes, Poppy Griffiths, <laughs> Jessica Howard, <laughs> Hannah Hines, <laughs> Holly Erin Cooley, <laughs> Tom Newton. Harry O'Brien. <laughs> Megan Bethany Orm. <laughs> Sir
Sophie Smithhurst. Simon Spencer. Jodie Elizabeth Thomas. Havelin Williams. Ancient History and Archaeology. Georgia May Haralambus. Mia Fling. Werner Maximilian Grostein. Gemma Diane Longley. Naomi May Tasker. Grace Woodward. Ancient History and Archaeology and History, James Dillon. Maisie Catherine Parks. Imogen Silva. Ancient History and Archaeology with Year Abroad, Leah Elizabeth Purcell. Ancient History with Year Abroad, Oscar Calvit Al Khalidi. Isaac Jackson. Harry Tyler. Anthropology and African Studies. Natasha Esther Anku. Anthropology and History, Maya Mullings. Isabel May Renison. Heather Francesca Turner. Anthropology and Political Science, Metzaluna Dietzuri. Edward David Anthony Burton. Tatiana Goodwin. Molly Kenyon. Samuel Oakes. Veronica Sural. Anthropology with African Studies, Effia Clifford Brown, <laughs> Rosie Moss, <laughs> Anthropology with Classical Literature and Civilization, Alicia Goldsmith, BA Ancient History with a Year Abroad Inverted, Samuel Cowan. <laughs> Ethan Edwin Latty Pulford. <laughs> ben Sheffy. <laughs> Classical Literature and Civilization, Eleanor Ambakar. Charlotte Emma Bussant. <laughs> David Brooks. <laughs> Aoife Green. <laughs> Zach Robert Greenman. <laughs> Alexander 
Alexandra Marie Haggerty. Lucy Veronica Keck. Charlotte Louise Langrish. Isabel Marchant. Jemima Plumtree. Maisie Pyle. Connor Dermot Ryan. Classical Literature and Civilization and Philosophy, Evie Grace Crawford Poxon. <laughs> Classical Literature and Civilization with Year Abroad, Angus Benjamin Hedger. <laughs> Xavier Wilshire. <laughs> Classics. Catherine Bowie. Charlotte Luke. Megan Murphy. English and Classical Literature and Civilization. Maimuna Chowdhury. Anushka Holland. <laughs> Alina Kokina. <laughs> Molly Matthews. Joanna McCrudden. Lucy Round. Hoppy Turner. Liberal Arts and Natural Sciences, Master in Science. Liberal Arts and Sciences, Biosciences, Ava Boxall Jordan. Liberal Arts and Sciences, Psychology, Rebecca Popovich. <laughs> Natural Sciences, Andreas Timothy Paneotu. Natural Sciences, Biology, William John Bug. <laughs> Bachelor of Arts, Liberal Arts and Sciences, Politics and Geography with a year in Computer Science, Mega Tavar. <laughs> Liberal Arts and Sciences, Caitlin Abaka Wood. Eloise Spence. <laughs> Neve Mary Frost. <laughs> Hannah Green. <laughs> Smilla Anna Christensen. Flora Leather. Florence Tatiana Moore. Morgellon Kensa Petherick Davis.
Isabel Shaw Smith. <laughs> Tiffany Sarah Spink. <laughs> Lillis Templeman. <laughs> Emily Wall. India Woman <laughs> Catherine Wooten <laughs> Liberal Arts and Sciences Anthropology Amy Bartlett <laughs> Liberal Arts and Sciences English and Sustainability Matthew Cockrum Liberal Arts and Sciences, English Language and Linguistics, Daniela Maria Priest. <laughs> Liberal Arts and Sciences, English Literature and Sociology, Daisy May McCormick Hardman. <laughs> Liberal Arts and Sciences, English Literature, Alice May Doig. Ella Morris Skingley. <laughs> Leah Renz. <laughs> Harrison Schumach. <laughs> Liberal Arts and Sciences Gender Studies, Eleanor Thomas. Liberal Arts and Sciences, History of Art, Maya Biddulph. <laughs> Liberal Arts and Sciences, International Relations, Andrew Chapman. <laughs> Eleanor Jane Williams. Liberal Arts and Sciences, Law and Creative Writing, Annabel Martinowski. <laughs> Liberal Arts and Sciences, Linguistics, Frederick James Berkeley Ingalls. <laughs> Liberal Arts and Sciences, Philosophy, Oscar Lawrence David Courtney. <laughs> Edward Reed. Daniel Waxkirsch. <laughs> Liberal Arts and Sciences, Political Sciences, Lily Ella Reynolds. <laughs> Liberal Arts and Sciences, Politics, with a year in civic leadership, Jasmine Burroughby Shenton. <laughs> Ratnadip Das. Liberal Arts and Sciences, Sociology, Jaya Vyas. <laughs> Liberal Arts and Sciences with a year in civic leadership, James David Garner Letts. <laughs> Medical Humanities, Lauren Antonia Glover. Molly Huxley. Samuel Riss Jennings. Niharika Manu. Mackenzie Vaughan. Bachelor of Science. BSc Natural Sciences, Biological Sciences and Paleology, Ethan Cobb. <laughs> BSc Natural Sciences, Computer Science and Physics, Lucas van Mol. <laughs> BSc 
Liberal Arts and Sciences, Jermaine Conroy. Liberal Arts and Sciences, Biomedical Sciences, Daniela Erminia Mai. Liberal Arts and Sciences, Biomedical Sciences, with a year in Computer Science, Freya Kavner. Liberal Arts and Sciences, Business, Georgia Paxton. Liberal Arts and Sciences, Chemistry, Sarah Dina Irene Rich. Liberal Arts and Sciences, Economics, Sophie Eleanor Clarkson. Eve Damer Tanner. Liberal Arts and Sciences, Geography, Ella Barnett. Liberal Arts and Sciences, Human Neuroscience, Sophie Alwyn Evans. Liberal Arts and Sciences, Mathematics, Lily Smith. Liberal Arts and Sciences, Psychology, Olivia Haynes. Abigail Ann Gillimin. Razia Sharmakan. Natural Sciences, James Alexander Robert Chubb. Natural Sciences, Biological Sciences and Human Neuroscience, Imogen Carter. Natural Sciences, Biological Sciences, Natasha Elizabeth Brooker. Catherine Emma Hobson. Isabel Saville. Natural Sciences Chemistry, Jake George Brown. Natural Sciences Material Science, Amy Howells. Natural Sciences, Maths and Psychology, Joanna Helen Ramsey. Natural Sciences, Physics and Computer Science, Veronica Victoria Visiolek. Natural Sciences, Physics, Edward Capps. Natural Sciences, Psychology, Elsa Cooney. Natural Sciences with a year in Computer Science, Dominic Boys. It now gives me grave, great pleasure to introduce the student representative who will be giving a speech for the room as a whole on behalf of the graduating cohort. It's my delight to present India Warman. Thank you for the introduction and good afternoon everyone. I'd like to start by saying that I asked ChatGPT to write me a graduation speech. <laughs> and this is what it said. Today we celebrate the culmination of years of hard work. Our achievements were made possible by the unwavering support of our families and the dedication of our teachers. As we embrace the future, let us carry the skills and resilience we have gained with optimism and courage, let us follow our dreams and make a positive impact. Congratulations. Our future awaits, and I'm confident that each of us will shine brightly in our own unique way. I think it's a good speech, and I certainly agree that all of those mentioned do deserve a round of applause. <laughs> but 
but I would say that speech was generic, maybe boring, and I wouldn't have blamed you for zoning out a bit there. But I don't mention chat GPT because I want to open a conversation about the efficacy of artificial intelligence or whether it will make our jobs obsolete. I mention it because I think it makes a useful contrast to help us appreciate and emphasize the achievement we've all made here. Because despite what some might argue, I don't believe that artificial intelligence could do what every single person wearing a gown and a cap has done. We are human. We have all suffered hardships and difficulties throughout our time here, some collectively and some individually. And though we cannot memorize the entirety of the internet and regurgitate it for any purpose on demand, we have all shown the capacity to complete an incredible amount of work in spite of these adversities. We have also built relationships. We have balanced the social life of studying and a lot of us moved away from our parents' house to live independently for the first time. We have all been isolated in some way or another during the course of the pandemic and still carried on with our lives. And actually, I'd like to thank university staff and lecturers for their incredible work adapting during that time. And we know you work hard enough as it is, so thank you for that. And so I hope that in spite of some recent debates about the value of a degree, about it being only preparation for employment, or even that some degrees are worth more than others, that you see the piece of paper in your hand as evidence that you are capable of amazing things. We are, after all, the creators of everything AI has been taught, and we are the ones that give significance to anything AI may or may not create. We have come to university to experience something that AI cannot give us, not only the value of learning, but of sharing ideas and of playing a part in creating ideas. And I hope you will agree that it has been a privilege to do it here at the University of Birmingham. Artificial intelligence is nothing without us. Thank you. Thank you, India, for your thoughtful words and for representing the class of 2023 so well. As Pro Vice-Chancellor and Head of the College of Arts and Law, it falls to me to bring this ceremony to a close. I know I speak for all the staff of the Departments of African Studies and Anthropology, of Classics, Ancient History and Archaeology, and of Liberal Arts and National Sciences in saying how delighted we are to see you graduate today and to congratulate you on your achievements. Amid the many effects of the pandemic, you have studied and succeeded during a time of unparalleled national and global disruption. You've had to work hard, read an enormous amount, write essays, sit exams, and deal with a changed world. You've done incredibly well, and I know that all the staff here are very proud of you. This is a university where the arts and humanities are prized, where we, need, where we know that we need to understand our past and present to imagine our future. Understanding human society and the human spirit are critical for digital, scientific, and technological advances, including ChatGBT, to succeed, for enriched lives and better futures. Fulfilled lives must include art, history, culture, beauty, and joy. Whatever you do, wherever you go, you'll take with you the skills, knowledge, and passion you have developed during your time here. Arts and Humanities graduates end up working in all manner of fields, in creative arts and industries, in business and government, as policy makers, as charity and community leaders, in international organizations, in heritage, publishing, media, to name but a few of the many fields in which our graduates excel. And this is not to mention the additional possibilities if you've also graduated in natural sciences. 
All of these areas value graduates who can think, who can analyze, who can reason, who can lead, who can problem solve, who can create, who can inspire. So I'd encourage you to think about what you can do with your degree and the difference you can make. From our very beginnings in 1900, as England's first civic university, Birmingham has welcomed peoples of all backgrounds and faiths and has been home to some truly inspirational people. If you walk down the corridors on either side of the Great Hall, you'll see museum objects, prototypes, manuscripts and photographs that tell the stories of groundbreaking researchers who undertook their work here at this university. They include a portrait of Nicholas Pevsner, arguably the most important architectural historian of the 20th century, who wrote his book An Inquiry into Industrial Art in England, here. There's a photograph of Professor Stuart Hall, who used cultural studies to understand the broader constructs that shape our everyday life, and whose intellectual influence has been enormous. There is a bust of Sir Edward Elgar, the first professor of music here, and one of this country's best known and best loved composers. The exhibition provides just a few examples of how people at this university have changed lives, have helped us understand and interpret the world around us, and have brought new ideas, art, color, and joy to so many others. Whatever you do, wherever you go, you can take pride in having studied and learnt at this university. This university and this city have been in the public eye during your time here. It will not have escaped anyone's notice that Birmingham hosted the Commonwealth Games last summer, that the University of Birmingham played a prominent part, and that here on campus we hosted the largest athletes' village and every game of hockey and squash. Birmingham students and alumni competed across nine sports and did incredibly well, winning two golds, a silver and a bronze, more than several small countries put together. I cannot guarantee that we'll have a major sporting event on our doorstep every summer, although next month we're hosting the International Blind Sports Federation World Games, and we're working with the city to ensure we build on the legacy of the games and the excitement and enthusiasm they generated. But whatever's happening on campus, you will always be welcome here. If you haven't done so already, do call by and take in the old and new masterpieces in the Barber Institute, one of this country's best fine art galleries. Or stop by for one of the music concerts put on by students from across the university. Or attend one of the public lectures given by our world-leading researchers. Or just take in again the beauty of this campus, these buildings, this place. When you leave here today, you start a new chapter with new challenges and new opportunities. We look forward to watching your progress and to seeing the difference you make. Our career service remains available to you whenever you want advice and support, and our alumni relations team run events connecting you with the more than 300,000 Birmingham alumni all across the world. Whether you've come from overseas, like me, from another part of this country, or from here in the West Midlands, the University of Birmingham has been your home and our doors will always remain open to you. You entered the Great Hall today as graduates, but you leave as graduates of the University of Birmingham. Class of 2023, well done. I declare the congregation closed.
close the ceremony, the maces are collected from the stage. The mace bearers lead the procession of staff and new graduates out of the Great Hall. The ceremony that completes the university journey for hundreds of Birmingham alumni is now closed. Congratulations to our new graduates. The attendees applaud our new graduating class.